demo. Um, as the demos are being videoed, we put on our website. And as a preview, Chef, could you please mute your cell phones so there's no interruptions? Thank you. Well, oh, last cookery demo of the day. Welcome to the Christchurch Vegan Expo 2017 cookery demos. And our uh, final chef cookie of the day is um, is um, Butsamudra from the Lotus Hearts, which probably, hopefully, a lot of you are familiar with. And he will be cooking a roast spice pumpkin soup. So, well, I'm just going to put a little bit hot louder. Is that better? Yeah. Can you all hear me? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit more. More? more. Okay, let's try this. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> Look at that. How apt. I get to wear a headset in the Air Force Museum. I feel like I'm from Bomber Command or something. If only my ear would get through. There we go. Well, hello everyone. Still working? You left the bike on your mouth. Oh, mouthpiece. That's important. Yes, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good afternoon. Uh, and welcome to uh, my little demonstration here that I'm going to be doing with some soup. We're going to be making three things today. A spiced pumpkin soup. We're going to combine that with a very nice tamarind aioli. And then we're going to even jazz it up and impress our friends even more. We add to that our chia and pumpkin seed croutons. Ooh, yeah, I know, it's all very exciting. Hello down the back, hello. Good, thank God we're waving, no one's fallen asleep yet. Okay, so everything, uh, what have we got here? It's all there on my recipe. Today's a little bit interesting for me. Because due to certain restrictions, I actually can't do uh, any cooking for you. Um, so we're going to need a little bit of imagination and um, a little bit of um, cooking uh, imagination. And we'll be able to get through it. So I'm going to start slightly out of order. If you go to the back of the sheet, when we look at our method uh, page there. I want to start with the, the croutons, which are really easy to make. Okay, these are completely vegan. All it is is, is uh, seeds and a bit of water and some salt and some rosemary. Straightforward. Okay, so I can do this today because I'm not doing anything else. So. <laughs> <laughs> Pumpkin seeds. You prepared before. Pre prepared. Some sesame seeds, half a cup of sesame seeds, half a cup of pumpkin seeds. We're then going for, what have I got, about a quarter of a cup of sesame seeds. I've also added some black ones today just for fun. There we go. Look at that. Chia seeds. Quarter a cup of those. Nice and easy. Still with me? Yeah. I see my microphone doesn't like my head. My head's too big. Okay. Linseeds. The chia seeds and the linseeds are going to bind the crackers together. If you haven't used those um, seeds before, when you add some liquid to them, they get really kind of gluggy and sticky. And so that's actually what binds everything together. So we don't need to add anything else. Okay, I think we've got about a quarter of a teaspoon or so of salt. You know, we can put that in there. And then some nice fresh rosemary from your garden. Oh my God, if you only could smell that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Picked this this morning from our, from our little herb garden outside the restaurant. Really beautiful, nice organic rosemary. It's going to smell it again while you watch me. <laughs> Yes, I know. <laughs> Better than that store-bought cheap stuff. They say that organic food has roughly 20 to 30 percent, no matter what it is, more nutrition than non-organic food, than commercial brought food. Okay, so we try to use um, as much organics as we can uh, in the restaurant. And I encourage you to as well. Now I know a lot of people say they're more expensive, <coughs> They're half the size. <laughs> but bear in mind that an orange, an organic orange, which might be half the size of a real orange, does have 30, 40% more vitamin C than a commercial 
uh, orange. If we go down the road of organics versus commercial food, I mean, a lot of the commercial food, as we know, even in New Zealand, grown with the pesticides, all the herbicides, all that kind of stuff, which really we don't want to be ingesting into our bodies. You know, we really want to be uh, giving our bodies the, the best uh, chance uh, to gain the nourishment, okay, without all these other sort of um, uh, foreign invaders. So, get organics when you can. Here we go. We're stirring it in. So, okay, you're going to taste them. They taste good. Okay. Does that mean you're going to add some water? I've already got some water here. Look at that. I'm so prepared. And that just goes in there like that. Then you're going to leave it for like sort of 10, 15 minutes. Okay. And we'll see how it goes. Good. We put that to one side. Easy. Look at that. Now you can go and watch your latest film or your movie and come back. So we'll go into the soup now. So this soup uh, is a roast pumpkin soup. So roasting the pumpkin, roasting the vegetables, just really brings out the flavours. Okay, really brings uh, they kind of caramelise, and you can really um, get well. Now we're allowed. We can lost about it. So I pre-roasted some other pumpkin here just to show you. Okay, so you want to get some nice colour on it. That's a really nice kind of caramelisation. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that camera. Hello. <laughs> there we go. It's probably be easier this way. So I did um, about a kilo of pumpkin, cut into nice pieces, and then added some coriander seeds and some cumin seeds, just straight in. Really nice organic ones there. I did some root ginger as well. Okay, cut up some root ginger, put that all on a roasting pan, and just roasted it for 20, 30 minutes or so until it's nicely caramelized, nice and brown, nice and soft, okay? Just put it all straight on there. And those cumin and coriander seeds are going to really impart a nice, a nice flavour. Okay, nice flavour. So, we then need to put some stock. Once we've got it all roasted, we want to make up a nice stock. Okay, so, you could use water, but as the guy says in the advert, right, why would you do that? But don't use their stuff either. Don't go down that road. <laughs> Try and make your own stock if you can, okay? It doesn't take, doesn't take too long. It's very simple to do. Um... My standard stock would be, I haven't written that down for you actually, but my standard uh, kind of stock would be encompassing things like carrots, potatoes, um, some nice organic celery, um, then you can use, uh, you can add some fresh coriander, you can do uh, cumin seeds, coriander seeds, star anise, any kind of spices, thyme, rosemary, I do always chop up lemon, put lemon in it, garlic, onion, go to town. You know, the more the better, really, when it comes to a stock. And you, so often people don't add spices and things to it like that, or herbs, but you definitely can. Okay, so just put them in, cinnamon sticks, whatever, you know. And it just gives it a nice kind of subtle flavor. And you definitely will notice um, if you cook a soup or anything like that um, with plain water as opposed to a stock, there is a definite clear difference. Definite clear difference. So secret number one, use a stock. Okay, so essentially we're just cooking the pumpkin up in the, in the, uh, and baking, the, roasting the pumpkin. And once that's done, once we've got our stock, we've strained off the vegetables, we've got a nice colourful stock. We would then put that into a blender, or you could use a stick blender, put the two together. We're looking for about a litre of stock, I think it says, roughly. And then we're going to blend it all up and make a nice smooth soup. This is a nice smooth soup. Okay, easy? God. I am a chef, actually. <laughs> I make it so simple, don't I? But then we're going to jazz it up with a uh, with an aioli as well, a nice tamarind aioli. Um, you don't have to go tamarind. I have. That's why it's down there. But um, you know, a base aioli, um, which makes a pretty good size. This this quantity here definitely makes five hundred to a thousand mils, I would imagine. Okay. You're looking at one cup of, this is, this is a cashew nut based aioli. So it's one cup of cashew nuts, and then go one cup of oil, uh, one cup of water, sorry. And then half a cup of like olive oil, or, right, or some, some other kind of oil. There's debate about oils. A nice extra virgin olive oil is definitely going to be the best one, as opposed to um, canola oil, or sunflower, any of those other oils, you know, they, they are, they're not as good for you, okay? 
So throw those in there with some garlic, clove of garlic, about a quarter of a cup of lemon juice, and then add some sea salt, some pepper, and we blend it all up. Okay? I don't have an example of my aioli here, but you're going to taste it soon. So don't, so don't worry too much. So, Do you use raw cashews or roast them? I uh, generally just use the raw ones. Yeah, you could roast them. No, nice. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't actually made it with that, but no, you could easily, easily do that. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have cashew nuts, you can you could do it with almonds. Uh, you could do it with you know, hazelnuts, anything like that. Okay. Keep it nice and simple. The main thing is to, uh, you know, I find with, the, with cooking really is to just try and make it as simple as I can. Because <laughs> everyone's really busy, right? You know? So this really is a, is a, is a very simple, straightforward... Um, Straightful recipe. Who here is actually vegan or vegetarian? How many have we got here? Not bad. Not bad. A whole bunch. Good. Who likes to cook? <laughs> Good. Who cooks? Every day. <laughs> nice. Maybe four times a week? Three? Two? One? Who cooks on weekends? <laughs> okay. Now, cooking your own food really is, uh, some people think it's quite difficult in terms of time, but I, I, my, from my experience, really, that's, that's just a, an easy excuse, I think, for a lot of us these days. And you, know, and you see a lot of the, the health issues and things that are happening around the world, even in New Zealand now. You know, cooking your own food with fresh, you know, whole food, organics, it's much better than just getting that quick little thing off the shelf in the supermarket, you know. Well, you don't know really where it's come from. You don't know what it's, what it's got in it, you know. So, I mean, you can go to the supermarket these days and you, and you can find any fruit and vegetable at any time of the year, you know, in your, in your classic supermarket, right? Um, and that's because, you know, tomatoes, for instance, you know, you might get a tomato out of season here, you know, but often it's being picked when it's being green and then it's being... Um, it's been ripened with uh, with gas, and then it comes to supermarket out of season. You know, so try and buy seasonal food, try and buy fresh food, organic food, and um, it's much better for you. Much better for you. What are we going to do next? My God, I've gone so fast, I don't really know what to do anymore. Well, that's good because all we want to do is really eat <laughs> and try it. The girls are starting to plate up now. Good. Okay, good. So this is the soup, though. It's going to go like that. So you're back to the soup. Did you liquidise the, the pumpkins? Or yeah, the in a blender. Okay. Or with a stick blender in the pot. Yep, definitely. Yep. Because you've got the, we've also got cumin seeds and coriander seeds in this. They can be a little bit crunchy if you're going to not do that. So try and blend it up. A little bit of a crunch is quite nice, actually, in there as well. So that's quite cool. But then we're going to put probably, a, a, you know, a nice generous amount of our aioli on here. Like that. Not really high def, is it? <laughs> Everything's just white. <laughs> this is our crouton. This is what it turns out like. Okay. So once we've let it sit for a little bit, it's kind of, kind of there. You can see that it's firming up. But I'll show you. That'll give me something to, something to do. You'd wait the 20 minutes, which is a little bit longer than this. There's still a little bit of water there. Okay, and then really simply, it's just going to go on a tray when the liquid has all dissolved. And you're just going to spread it out nice and flat. I've said about four mils or so, three or four mils. Don't worry, you don't need to get out your ruler. It's okay, don't panic. You'd spread that out, and then you're going to add a little more, a little more sea salt. Let me demonstrate. <laughs> and he got it on camera. That's unbelievable. <laughs> if you want that photo, just get in touch with this man. Um, then it's going to go in the oven for about 20, 30 minutes. Okay? Then you're going to bring it out at that particular point. So set your timer here. Set your timer with this one. This stuff will go to Billio. <laughs> then you can cut it into whatever shapes or sizes you want. It's kind of half done. You then want to score it and cut it, okay? 
I made little squares today. But I've done triangles and all sorts, okay? I know. All sorts. Although I haven't done circles. Then it's got to go back in the oven for another 20 or 30 or so minutes, I guess. And then it'll be nice and crispy, like this. And then you can just go like that. And put that on there like this. Then you might want to add a little bit of paprika for some more extra colour. If you have some greens, you could do that as well. And then we would put it there, in front of our camera. That's all, you can sort of see there, it's already sitting. Just a little bit more liquid to evaporate in there. Help bind it. And it's all done. Well, folks, I don't quite know what else to say. Would you like me to speak some more? <laughs> Any questions? The oven, sorry, the oven. Yes, I oh, love it there. Oh, yes. The oven for the croutons is then at 180 like pumpkin. Yep, that'll be fine. Yep. yep. Everyone's oven is different. I mean, I cook it at 150 in the restaurant, but we've got nice commercial ones. Do you use fan bake? Yeah, they're fans, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so... But just yeah, just just keep an eye on the on the seeds and stuff like that. So be straightforward. I use sea salt a lot as opposed to Himalayan salt. Anyone else use sea salt or Himalayan salt or Himalayan salt? Yeah. Someone asked me the other day why I was using sea salt more than other salt. Um, in my opinion, um, I know that nutritionally, sea salt, out of just as a point of interest here to give my girls a bit more, I'm padding for time. Um, has roughly 20 to 30 more minerals and nutrients in it from what I have read on the juxtaposing the two together. I also like the idea of the, the energy that you get with the sea salt. Because you want to find a nice sea salt which has been sun dried out in the sun. Okay, so we're getting the energy from the sun into the sea salt. And when you buy sea salt of that particular nature, of a very high quality, it actually still should be a little bit damp. And it, actually they're almost a little bit not quite bright white, a dull white or slightly off, off, off white, okay? That means there's still a good amount of magnesium in the salt in that particular point. Because a lot of the other salts that we do get, and especially if you just buy the regular table salt, please don't do that. Don't go down that road. Because that stuff is actually being kiln dried, okay? And when you dry anything in a kiln like that, it destroys all the nutrients. There's nothing actually in it at all, apart from that salty flavour. And actually, more, more than not, your body actually treats that as like a foreign invader, that particular salt. Your body finds it incredibly hard to digest and to get rid of. Okay? So try and find a nice organic sea salt or um, a Himalayan salt. I know that the scientists once tried to recreate the ocean in a tank. I read this on my sea salt investigations. And as they're fancy people with white coats and uh, clipboards, they, had, they knew exactly what was in the ocean, right? All the minerals and all the breakup, everything that goes into it. I don't know. Okay, they analysed it. And so then they just got a massive big tank of water and they, and they um, just sort of injected or dropped all these different elements into the water to try and recreate the sea. They added plants and they added some little sea creature type things. <laughs> Might even have been fish. And after a short amount of time though, actually, it all, they all started to die. And they couldn't actually work it out because they've actually analysed it and put everything in there that they knew was in the sea. So I put that out there as a kind of thing, well, there's probably something else that they haven't actually discovered, which is kind of spooky. You know? I like to think maybe it was the energy. Maybe it's that sun energy. I'm not too sure. So, yeah, that convinced me. I was, that's it. I'm into sea salt, I said. I love a story like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I'm going to add some more. Look at that. <laughs> Okay, any other questions? Any other questions there? I'm sorry it's been so brief and so... Uh... Oh, hello! In, in your restaurant... Yes. Um, have you been there? Yes, I have. It's do you like it? Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Where do you source um, your vegetables from? Uh, we have a number of organic uh, suppliers. Yeah. Then we, we also have to get some stuff, just the regular things, which we can't quite get, but yeah. Well, you know, I'd like to say that, but I don't know, kind of have enough time, no. really. Now we have them come to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, if you haven't been to the Lotus Hut restaurant, you are more uh, than.
they're welcome to come